When I started receiving tweets and messages about the haunting of Shane Dawson, which is the first video to be uploaded to Shane's channel in over a year, I was only mildly surprised. But when I learned that it was just the first episode of a three-part series, I immediately got that feeling where you think the horror movie has a happy ending, but the main character realizes it's all a dream. And then all of a sudden, Freddy Krueger is yanking someone back through the front door like an inflatable sex doll. And I'm the sex doll in this scenario, obviously, because this is how I sleep. And this little dolly was just starting to feel the light of freedom on my face after being railed in the beautiful world of Jeffree Star for over seven hours, which was Shane Dawson's previous series that we just finished covering. But of course, I needed to watch the start of this new series to see if Shane had developed his craft over this break. Also, I was planning on covering spooky content throughout the month of October anyway. So how could I even resist the terrifying moments that Shane is serving up in this special Halloween episode? Such as a tour of his unfinished basement, the normal behavior of cats, and watching him still try to redeem his past work by pointing out that there were also maybe a few minutes throughout them that weren't entirely racist, abusive, or transphobic. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm sure some Southern cotton plantations had a beautiful view of the sunset, but that's not a good enough reason to go back and commemorate them on a postage stamp. So let's get ready to hear Shane warm up his audience for another pivot towards the paranormal and also learn about his hopes of one day creating a great horror movie. Although if I were him, I would start by trying to make an even just okay YouTube YouTube video because I promise you this was not that start mama and you'll see for yourself in another highly requested Shane Dawson installment of clip breakdown Halloween <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web and decide, is it gonna kill my brain cell or is it going to promote healthy neural pathways? I think at this point we've covered enough Shane Dawson content for you to make a hypothesis. Oh, a hypotenuse. A hypotenuse. A squared plus B squared equals you're about to see squared sh in my face. I didn't like this video and I'm annoyed from the beginning. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see the rest of this Shane series. You didn't really think we'd be done with Shane forever. I didn't. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm frying my brain cells with the pixels on my screen. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon available where you can access a bonus content. I didn't know that Shane would be releasing new content so shortly after I finished that long series, but I also wasn't expecting so many people to message me saying that the only way they were going to figure out what was in this series is by watching me break it down. And yes, I am willing to accept that responsibility as a global hero. I'm a hero. Purple heart. By the way, do any of you know how to fix a purple heart? I feel like it's not getting enough oxygen. Anyway, Shane um, disappoints me right off the bat by letting me know what it is we're watching. <laughs> Don't worry, Shane. I'm always very discreet about viewing your content. By the way, I'm thinking of titling this video, Shane Dawson made another thing and it sucks like an airplane toilet. Because like I said, subtlety and discretion are key pillars of the Noc Doritamano brand. I gotta nail down the pronunciation of that. What do you guys call me? I can't help but point out that Shane gives us this 24 seven viewer discretion warning for the series, even though this entire first episode is going to be him showing us the suburban mom decor he picked up from home goods. Although looking at it in slow motion, maybe the warning was meant for that not cool poster I got a glimpse of just now. Cause that's the real haunted horror show, mama. We saw that movie. And don't think that I'm not clocking this red font as a lower budget recreation of the 
epic opening title sequence from the first Insidious movie. What Shane made here today is not going to be nearly that scary, although both pieces do have points where I feel vaguely concerned for the safety of a child. Listen, I love references. I think filmmakers need to have good references, and as an artist, it's like part of how you grow. But what I'm noticing is that Shane fails to combine different references or just elevate his ideas to something that's truly original. Like, I shouldn't be able to be like, oh, he copied Insidious. And frankly, most of his references do seem to come from a very specific era in horror filmmaking. From sort of that Wes Craven slasher renaissance that started with Scream in 1996 and then was copied and pasted over and over again through the early thousands. If that's a period of cinema that really fascinates Shane, I think that's great. But in general, that genre didn't produce a ton of like artistic horror films. So other than him just kind of copying those cheap formulas that were never really critically renowned, I wish he would take his love for this era of filmmaking and combine it with like those mind consuming storytelling tactics that truly set apart the best movies in history. Anyway, this opening scene shows a lot of teaser footage that we will not have come to fruition in this first episode at all, but it also can't be ignored that Shane did not know he was gonna be making a three part series when he started shooting this video that we're watching now. I don't know at what point he decided he could like had enough footage to split it up into three parts or why he decided to do so little planning that the first part was basically obsolete, but doesn't matter. Just follow me on this awful journey. Oh Things follow me. Sure. Like, I guess you don't know that. Things follow me, Chris. You're not gonna go out the way you said that was so scary. <laughs> huh? What? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm not really sure that sentimental interjection really flowed with the mood you were trying to build up using the previous clip but it does sort of feel like a tactic used at the top to help soften your audience into making the video be more well received. Like what other intended psychological effect would making that statement at the beginning of the video B, other than to have someone who's like on the fence about whether they should accept Shane's content that's new again or not, like if they've also missed like the old Shane videos, which is the sentiment a lot of people say, then they're gonna respond to this by being like, I missed you too, okay, great, I the thumbs up this video. But I mean, I can't say for sure whether or not Shane is even conscious that he's using this obvious age old tactic. I mean, there are parts of this episode that are so mind numbing, I can't even say whether I'm conscious or not. It's not even until after this 40 minute episode ended that I even realized my smoke alarm was going off. And by then all of the silicone sex toys that I was boiling had melted into one 12 inch cylinder in my saucepan. But don't worry, still usable baby. I call it my panic button. Just breathe and you'll get through it. What is up with some of the things that I'm saying these days? What is up? I really don't want to go back to the corporate world, clearly. I'm like, let me ruin any hope of that. Shane then throws up a clip of this Wes Craven quote saying, the horrors of retirement, these are scarier than any horror movie I can dream up. I don't know, I've, I talked to some retired people out here and it seems kind of cool. Also, I don't know if anyone expected Shane to actually retire from, you know, making content. It seems like the only thing he knows how to do. I think they just wanted him to get better at it, but this is not uh, super promising. Watch this first little clip. Now that all of the text in the world has been shown before us. Alrighty, let the record show that the series started wasting screen time at around 90 seconds with this real-time ambling shuffle up to a house that it feels like the grandparents of several different families might have died in. You'll also notice for this series we have a new camera operator named Chris who, just as Andrew did in Shane's previous series, adds a generous handful of live commentary to help highlight the scary things we're gonna be seeing, such as Shane's bold statement art pieces which which maybe could have passed as eclectic in LA, but somehow make this Colorado house look like the general store that's attached to a Cracker Barrel restaurant. I'm not saying I'm an expert at interior design, but I do appreciate tasteful decor, so it's hard for me not to notice when I'm looking at other types of decor. Are you guys ready to laugh your heads off? <laughs> So epic if that was real. <laughs> I learned piano during my break. <laughs> Kidding, I didn't learn anything. 
<laughs> no, I learned a lot about myself. Well, I guess personal growth is good, but along with playing piano, can we also add the art of comedy to the list of things that you clearly haven't been practicing over the last year? And you know what? Let's throw public relations on there too. Since nearly every time Shane brings up a serious topic or reveals some sort of personal struggle, it's always immediately followed with, just kidding, just kidding, I'm doing great. It's actually the opposite of what I just said. Here's another example of that just seconds later, which comes with a light trigger warning regarding the topic of one ending their own life. If you want to completely avoid any uh, conversation around that, just go ahead and skip to the time stamp uh, on the screen. I'll give you one second to do it. Anyways, trying to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't. I did. Well. Eh. What? Chris is videotaping this with his electromagnetic field reader in the other hand like <laughs> on the phone I thought you said this video was about ghost hunting. I am not asserting that it was intentional but it seems like by Shane saying that he did this and then immediately saying oh no I'm just kidding I didn't but then adding another non-verbal layer of ambiguity on top of that it, it's gonna put the audience in a very sympathetic place for whatever happens next in this series. My point being that type of severe mental mental health crisis is not a topic that Shane's audience deserves to have introduced via his hard to decipher sarcasm or like facial expression based sense of humor. Because now it's either one of two things. He just made a tasteless, untrue joke about trying to end his life. Or as he then implied, something sort of like this might have happened. But instead of bringing that transparency and honesty to the video, we just get this four story house tour from a couple of people who believe in ghosts and demons to such a scientific extent that I'm starting to wonder if that's just evolution's way of giving the human brain something to deal with when you have nothing else to do all day but sit around and collect passive income. There is another point where Shane mentions that things got very dark for him, but he doesn't want to make the video about that. In fact, I don't really think he wants to make the video about anything. He says this is an attempt to just help him start feeling creative again. But I keep scrubbing back and forth through all 40 minutes of this, and I swear to gobbles the ghost that I I'm not finding any creativity throughout, so I'm stumped. Of course, Shane hasn't lost his trademark brand of like kind of hyperactive humor. Uh, okay. I feel like I have so much to say that I don't know where to start. Look at my new bling pumpkin. <laughs> I'm sure this is going to sound snobby, but I don't even want to look at that thing. This is the type of decoration that was made for the front desk of your Botox place from October through November. Also, I hate to say it so early on, but this series already lacks focus. That entire sentence lacked focus. You don't know what you wanna say, but you have a lot to say. Maybe put a few bullets in your notes app before you start recording. So already the video has nothing to do with the title of it. He didn't open by being like, so here's the deal, my house is haunted, which would have gotten me into the zone right away. It's him get, like all of a sudden doing a house tour. I feel like I've already seen this on Ryland's dumbass channel. <laughs> After we moved in, I saw PewDiePie made a video making fun of it. In this house, we laugh a lot. We can't even. <laughs> it's just so cheesy, but it's cute, right? It's literally got paint that's like chipping and peeling off of it, so I'm not even gonna answer that question. If that sign were in the house that I just dropped $2.2 million on, it would be in my closing contract that the previous homeowners have to take it off the wall, bring it out into the backyard, and beat each other to death with it. That's what they've obviously been doing, using that sign to put their sick livestock out of its misery for the last five generations. The interior decoration on this 2.2 million home, like mama, girl, whatever. Not my money. Because I finally don't really care anymore what other people think about me, except for myself. But I don't really like me either, so <laughs> we're in a weird place. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm feeling great. I didn't learn anything over my break. Just kidding, I did. My life was in danger. Just kidding, it wasn't. I still hate myself. Just kidding, I don't. No offense, Shane, but this video about your haunted house sort of feels like the first time visiting your dad's new apartment after the divorce. This is where I sleep. As you can see, mommy decided she gets to keep the expensive mattress that daddy paid for. Just kidding. Isn't it cool how my new bed comes out of the couch? Like, Okay, my brain isn't fully processing why this is making me feel weird, but I'll definitely remember it for the rest of my life. I am tired of just sitting around and waiting for some crazy idea to hit me. I feel like if I don't just start trying something, nothing's gonna happen. 
Like maybe this will get me creative again. Wait, what am I talking about? <laughs> I have a pinata. Sorry, this is random, but this is my new pinata. I love her. Remember at the beginning when this said viewer discretion always advised? Um, did you mean parental supervision? Because right now you're showing us the things people buy for a kid's party. From the intro, you really made it seem like this series would have a darker tone, so I don't know what's going on. If that's not the actual cursed pinata from La Llorona's wedding reception, and it's not filled with blood and guts, I'm staying unsubscribed because Shane Dawson is still not giving us anything he promised in his series. I'm in a place now where I, it's been a very, oh my God, the sun's coming out. I wish I cared about that. I'm in a place, you know people who care about that, it's weird. Okay. <laughs> The sunset. Oh my god. And? Yeah, it's evidence that you don't have much of an eye for natural beauty since the entirety of your last series took place under the harsh fluorescent lighting of one conference room that always looked like it was too cold. Shane feels really happy with the move to Colorado. He loves having Rylan's family close by. It feels like his family. And he's ready to start a new chapter. In the next chapter of my life, I really do want to focus on what I've wanted to do forever, which is make horror movies. And Colorado is scary. <laughs> the energy here is just different. Like it gets, I don't know, like it really does inspire me to to write more, to get it more excited about horror, to kind of tap into that place. Okay, then do it. Why is it taking you 10 minutes to say that? If he could have just started the video at this point, it would have saved me from having to make 12 to 20 critical remarks about his work. I know technically I don't have to make these comments anyway, but then what would you be watching on your lunch break right now? Shout out to the lunch break crew. Drop an emoji in the comments of what you're eating for lunch today. I better see so much an eggplant in those comments because that means you're probably not able to skip my mid-roll ads. Revenue, literal garbage. That's, you know, that's the stairs. I appreciate you showing me, but those don't seem tall enough for me to break a bone if I throw myself down them. So I'm gonna have to think of some other way to injure myself as an excuse to leave. Would you mind dropping one of those kitchen knives on my foot? Um, I like that Shane is talking about how he's in therapy. That's great. He was actually in therapy before all of the older stuff came out and kind of canceled him. And he expresses how it was sort of a surreal experience because he felt that he was being canceled for stuff that he had already changed and grown and learned from. I feel like that was really clear with his early apology videos a year ago, but it's nice to hear him recognize that, oh, it's not enough for me to just say, that's not me anymore. And he accepts that it is him, and, but he learned from it. What it falls short of is him adding on like a specific apology to the groups of people he may have harmed with that past content. And honestly, it seems like such a vital step in making a public apology for any sort of mistake. He's probably apologized for specific remarks and videos in the past, but now that he has this foresight and he seems to really understand the severity of what he did and learn from his cancellation, it just seems like a good time just for him to be like, so now let me say one more time to the black community, I'm so sorry for doing this, to the trans community, I'm so sorry for doing this, to anyone who felt that this was promoting this horrible act, I'm so sorry and I'm going to work so hard to do that. You know, where is that? We never get that. It's always just like, I'm sorry for anything offensive I've ever done and I'm never gonna do it again. But whatever, let's just keep watching. You literally do I had a plan going into this. Like I was gonna tell you guys about this haunted location we're going to later. Well, guess what? It's still not too late. Before you uploaded this, you could have just cut out all of the garbage that makes this very informal vlog feel a tad oversold when you call it a three-part series. Like we're on, like it's a limited Netflix show. This entire episode has basically nothing to do with the haunted location they're about to visit. And I'm betting that the next two episodes we are gonna see could have easily been cut down into one. Shane has never proven himself to be someone who can sustain an interesting arc of a story over a multiple part series. And I would be more impressed if he could just show us that he's able to produce one successful standalone piece. But that would require some self editing and it just doesn't make as much money as cranking out countless minutes of nonsense and, and just layering on the pointless fluff. Like to me, this is not entertaining enough to warrant millions of views on YouTube. But you know, clearly entertainment is subjective. I know because I've been subjected to this entertainment for so long. No planning. Ugh, I hate it. I'm gonna just run these underwater so we don't light the new house on fire. 
which could be a good series. Shane, baby, I don't know if you're watching this, and if you are, I apologize for saying that your back was wet enough to grow moss. Although I do hope it helps give you an example of what a good joke sounds like. But anyway, I just had to jump in after what you just said and remind you that you have no f clue what would make a good series. That much we know. We keep seeing the evidence in all of your series that aren't good. Like, if you want to make a horror movie, try writing and producing a short horror movie. You have all the money you need to fund it yourself right now, so what's holding you back? Like, I just don't, I don't feel bad for Shane and his artistic, you know, creative block because there is no creativity there that's been blocked. He has the privilege where he's sitting to completely fund his own movie, as he's done in the past and even like do a whole behind the scenes series behind it to like make us feel excited about it. And then he could add all these other actions that make him seem like not a total like tone deaf idiot. Like hiring a cast of really inclusive people, getting very talented and diverse writers to help improve his work, building a crew that's gonna help enhance the final product rather than just try to take it all on himself and do a half-assed job with all of it. Make a movie, not this low effort, stupid documentary. Now let's take a quick break with the word from our sponsors at Every Plate. I have still reached a point in my life where I'm pretty sure the only way I'm gonna be able to throw together a respectable meal myself is by using a meal delivery service. I didn't know I could be that person in the past because it was so expensive at most companies. But as you know from my past videos, Every Plate has completely convinced me that it is possible possible to have the same amazing high quality ingredients and meals delivered to your door for a more affordable price. Uh, when I do it on my own meal planning, it feels like an endless chore, but every plate does all of that planning and shopping for me and just ships the ingredients along with easy to follow recipe cards to my door. No measuring, none of the boring stuff. I don't even clean, I just let it crust onto my stove. I'm kidding. And you don't sacrifice the customization. There are 17 meals to choose from each week. You can swap out veggies and protein to your liking. I just feel like I work really hard, you work really hard. Let's give ourselves a break and let's stop wasting money on expensive overpriced meal kits. Are you seeing right now this delicious onion, cheddar, and broccoli bisque that I created with crusty, crusty bread? Ah! Try every plate for just $1.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NICKDERAMIO199. Hope you're good and full, cause it's time to get back to the shame of it all. Here's a little bit about how we meet Chris, our current camera operator. I met you in 2009 on a short film that uh, I've probably deleted. <laughs> and now looking back, there's jokes in them and there's things in them that like I would never do now. But I shouldn't just throw all that stuff away when it kind of got me to where I am and it also connected with people. And yeah, there was bad stuff in those videos, but like the good stuff connected with people. And I can't just throw that away. Mm -hmm you can just throw it away. It might have just connected with people because you were spoofing Twilight at the height of its popularity, so I don't really feel like this needs to be archived for the Library of Congress. I'm not sure why Shane's trying to say that there were redeemable moments even in his most problematic content, because that's a lie. There were cheap, formulaic, forced, sentimental endings that all felt stolen from other movies. So it's not like it was insanely creative storytelling that was like coming through even though there were bad parts to it. Also, I'm pretty sure another reason Shane's videos were connecting with people at such a rapid rate is because he learned how to game YouTube's algorithm at the time, which caused his videos to be recommended to a whole bunch of preteens who were too young to understand the depth of the prejudice in what he was showing them. Now it is the point at 25 minutes in, over halfway through, where Shane finally starts talking about the ghosts. I feel like the entity in this house, whatever is back here, is like positive and creative and exciting. Um, but I could be lying, they could be lying to me. But if it's good <laughs> down here. That's not one of your angels. That's not one of your lovely spirit guys. That's going to be a negative spirit. I don't know why Johnny Under Armour over here is supposed to know everything about angels and spirit guides, but I do know that his desktop lamp lighting is putting me in a negative spirit. Shane obviously loves to re-edit and mix in clips from other creators to add some Italian dressing zest to his big nothing sandwich of a video. But to me, for someone who says they want to get creative again, 
this documentary feels very underproduced. Shane didn't want to FaceTime with some paranormal expert to show them the house and get their approach on how to go into the situation. Like maybe we're getting this house tour by you showing a psychic who's trying to get a feel for the energy. Like that idea would have required maybe at most four extra hours of effort going into this video, but it would have made it seem 10 times more professional and structured. And I just thought of that at the same time as I'm trying to get this annoying strand of pineapple out from between my molars. Hold on, no, you know what? Uh, that's an exposed nerve ending. Is it like a normal Halloween thing for my teeth to keep falling out? Let me know in the comments below. <sighs> so Shane says that he met somebody who said like, oh no, this town has a really haunted place. And I just want to point out that literally like almost every single town in the US at least has like a local area that they, the kids claim to be haunted and drive to at night. So I asked Morgan, I was like, have you heard of this? And she was like, like, it's really scary. And I was like, well, should we go? And she was like, it's like real. Like, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh my God, like I heard, it's like, there's people that have gone there that are like, they are horrified and f***ed up and things follow them back home. Things follow them back home, like stray cats. I feel like if you can just try to wear a shirt that doesn't smell like hot dogs, then we should be fine. Do you have any? This is just a perfect example of Shane's broken, uh, discontinuous logic when it comes to making a documentary. He just had the audacity to say this. Like, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh my God, like I heard, it's like real. Literally 10 seconds after saying, I heard about a place from uh, someone I met at a coffee shop. Shane, I have to ask, how in the Halloween did you get so famous on YouTube when you seem to edit your videos at the same time you're watching the latest episode of Big Brother? Don't tell me that something is more than just hearsay when all you have for me so far is hearsay? Hearsay, hearsay queer say, say, on career day, strut that catwalk in a fierce way. That was just a little something for you DJs out there to sample, royalty free. Within reason, actually. If, you're, if, if we're getting on the billboard charts, I wanna cut. See, as a storyteller, this is where it would become clear to me that episode one of the series should be all about going into the lore of this haunted area. Where did this coffee shop person hear about it? Is it something that everyone knows about from childhood? Let's look up articles about it at the local library because it would be visual and cinematic. You know, I'm just tossing out a few ideas that would cost mm, a half a tank of gas and like a half hour of planning. I just feel like that might be a worthwhile investment since you'll be making thousands of dollars in revenue off of people watching this content. And also just because you said you want to make horror movies one day, but then you don't even try to elevate your so-called horror series above the production quality of an unscary seasonal vlog. And it's not like I want to completely dismiss this very informal style of documentary filmmaking that Shane uses, although I could really do without the cartoonish music cues and audibly overdramatic camera operator. In any case, when Shane uses this run and gun style of shooting, it never feels like it's an intentional production choice that was used to like more effectively tell the story or make it more scary. It always, it, it just looks like it was done because it was simply the cheapest, fastest way that required little to no prior planning. My feelings on making any type of video from mine here on YouTube all the way up to a feature film is that you can really only have two of those three things and still expect a decent result. For example, if you want a great looking project to get done fast and cheap, then you better have planned and rehearsed the hell out of it beforehand. If you wanna get it done fast, but you haven't done any prior planning, then it definitely won't be cheap to get the best looking result. And finally, if you wanna get it done cheap and you still haven't done any prior planning, then you can bet that it's not going to get done fast. You're gonna be taking a lot of time on set trying to figure things out to make them look right. Time that you may not have. It's basically a variation of the famous dilemma of fast, cheap, and good. You can only choose two. However, this rule does not apply to everything, okay? When it comes to me, if you want it done fast, cheap, and good enough, then I scribbled my phone number on the bathroom wall. But it was in my own bathroom, so now I have to repaint before I move. Mm, that sounds hard. Can one of you just come do it for me? I'm just gonna put up a screenshot of my address on Google Maps. You can drop by any time that works for you. Thanks. In this next sentence, I definitely start to smell a rebrand. Shane is using words like, I wanna get back into horror. Like I was getting too scared of it, but now I really wanna lean into it. Um, so I don't know if he's trying to be like, you know, the channel is gonna be all ghost hunty like Demi Lovato is doing now. But uh, yeah, I smell a stunt. Oh, this is cool. All silhouetted. Oh, 
no. <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack tonight. <laughs> okay, Chris, we just met you today. So are you being facetious or is this your way of telling us that you suffer from nightly heart attacks? Okay, wait, now I'm the one being facetious and you're the ones pretending to be scared of a fully lit basement early in the afternoon and well into your 30s. I think that's the casting breakdown for this adventure so far. Let's forge ahead. I'm gonna die not from a ghost from anxiety. Oh my God, imagine a ghost with anxiety. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I want to possess you, but I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> Remember when Shane played devil music at the beginning of this and warned us viewer discretion always advised? And now we're watching him unwittingly describe the plot of Casper the Friendly Ghost. As you saw, Shane said he feels like the entity in this house is like a creative and positive force. And I'm like, baby, you better hope so. If I were Shane Dawson, I would be selling my soul and licking the devil's ass for just one ounce of creativity. I mean, honestly, I would do that right now, just for a change of scenery. Okay, so once they get back upstairs, everyone freaks out because there's physical evidence of a ghost, even though there's not. What happened? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, I probably yeah, You don't it. know what that is? It no. just happened. <laughs> Wait, stop, you're scaring me so much. Are you serious? That? What? That I don't know. Okay, we might not know the source of this abrasion, but I think it's safe to say it's not life-threatening. So maybe the outright panic and fear is a little much. I'm not trying to invalidate the potentially spooky nature of Chris's painless scratch, but I have sensitive skin and I'll get something like that just from rubbing against a sharp edge or corner. Call me when the demon scratches a graffiti style tag onto someone's lower back that says Dump. That's when I'll be interested in getting in line to have the same thing scratched onto my back, baby. Halloween, Halloween. I'm just kidding, mom and dad. Stop it, I'm so scared. Whoa. This is a horror movie. So that's gonna be a negative spirit. Oh, guess we gotta go back to the Velveeta guest room to check in with that guy again. Also, I want to object very early on to Chris referring to this as a horror movie because Shane Dawson will try to list it as such on IMDb. And I promise you, I am willing to let some independently wealthy person take him to the Supreme Court on that. Actually, no, I'm not inciting anything. I'm not suggesting that. I'm, I'm perfect, I'm innocent. Look, I wear lip gloss. This scratch is like the, the climax. <laughs> That's actually scary. <laughs> Right? Or no? That's not- I, it's normal. I didn't even realize it. It definitely looks like a scratch. To answer all of your questions, it is not scary. It is normal. And no, it does not look like a scratch from any sort of claw. So why don't you just close the fridge door behind you so at least there's one thing going on in this kitchen that isn't a total waste of energy. I really here understand the full extent of how much Shane and Ryland believe in ghosts. I'm not judging people who believe in ghosts. I'm not saying I don't believe in ghosts. I'm saying there's, n there's not a lot of concrete proof that we need to be afraid of them in everyday life. But there was a demon that took over my body. I don't know how much oh, he's yeah. told you. It actually <laughs> I came to bed one night and he popped up, jumped up out of bed and he went, watch out for the balloons, you're gonna die. Don't fall off the bed, you're gonna die. And he like looked me in the eyes. And then I said, what? And then he goes, ha 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 ha, you're gonna die. I mean, that was definitely weird, and I hate that my brain has to retain the image of you doing that just now. But it kind of sounds like Rylan's demon was trying to help you avoid death. He said, don't fall off the bed, probably don't go on any hot air balloon rides. And the last time wasn't super specific, but I would assume even a demon would be concerned about your diet soda intake. Also, if Shane was looking for inspiration for his horror movie so much, why didn't he use that scary experience? Like that was the creepiest part of this was him being like, you're gonna die. So like write that into a short horror film, share that scary experience you had through some characters that you created in a fictional way. Whatever, not my, not my millions of dollars to waste. I was just like trying to go back to sleep, pretend it didn't happen. And he kept being like, well, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. And then I laid awake the whole night thinking moving to Colorado ruined our lives. Oh, well that was a very revealing story, wasn't it now? I guess it just never occurred to me that two fully grown homeowners could work themselves up into a legitimate demon panic because one of them talked in their sleep. But I don't even care about the possession of Emily Ryland Adams Rose. As much as I do that he instantly took it as proof that it was a mistake to move to Oregon. Like, I guess just some people really take demons and ghosts to, to be a more practical thing than I realized. Like these two are fully out here floating through those Portland woods naked, like the final scene in The Witch. This is real life to them. Demons warned me not to move to this house. 
Throughout the video, you really get a sense that Ryland is not as excited about moving to Oregon as Shane is. Ryland feels more like he moved back to his childhood hometown, which he did, where Shane feels like, ugh, he's done this Jeffree Star thing of getting out of LA to, to own a ranch. Anyway. Cats do this crazy thing where they see ghosts. He's laying on my chest and then he'll go, and then he'll look over me and then he'll go, and he'll follow it across the room and then all the hairs on his body stand up and then he goes, Oh. And then I go, Cheeto, you're scaring me, Cheeto, you're scaring me. Wow, it really sounds like Shane lives with a lot of paranormal anxiety. Are you really about to call the Ghostbusters because your cat can hear the pipes in your wall? Like it makes more sense for an animal to be scared or confused by that since they have tiny smooth brains. I don't know what Shane Dawson's brain looks like, but I mean, at the very least, he seems willing to sink down to that mental level of cats. If my cat was staring off and making a weird noise at the walls, I'm sorry. As a 30 year old person, I would not say, Cheater, you're scaring me, Cheater, you're scaring me. I would say, you're, you're being a cat. Bye cat, hi cat. Again, I'm not a doctor, but this, all of this anxiety about ghosts and demons from both of the members of this household seem or feel on some level like a symptom of another type of anxiety. <laughs> you know, like this is just the way that it's manifesting itself, but what the f do I know? All right, finally we're going to this stupid haunted location. Literally the last 10 minutes of the episode. I also need a hard drive because I'm going to be editing again. <laughs> Ooh, why did he say that the same exact way that the demon warned him about his death? You're going to die. I'm going to be editing again. Ooh. <laughs> experience the sunset over the lake. <sighs> Look at it. Isn't it pretty? It's like down over there. Oh. <laughs> okay, you, just, you took a picture probably. I'll put it, I'll show it. Yeah. Wasn't that pretty? <laughs> yes, it actually was a gorgeous golden hour sunset. You probably could have got some beautiful footage for your three part series that you're working so hard on. Again, it's a little weird to me that Shane keeps talking about wanting to make movies for a living when he has never ever once shown a legitimate interest in cinematography. Sunrises and sunsets look gorgeous on camera because the quality of the sunlight is so unique and you get these long shadows that add dimension and texture to the ground. Like does Shane even think in his head about what makes a good movie good? I'm so tired. I so pale. I didn't know that Shane and Ryland, they believe in a seemingly like a monotheistic God. They're like, that sunset looks like God. Jesus is up there being like, hell yeah. Maybe he's trying to sell this content on the back end to Pure Flix. Specifically, we weren't aware that we moved into, I don't know. Trump country? <laughs> but the people here are so nice that they're like, when they see that we're two guys in a relationship, they're like, oh, you guys are together? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, wow, that's amazing. I love gay people. Gay people are great. Nothing wrong with them. They're not weird at all. And I'm just like, <laughs> It's really sweet though, it's sweet. I mean, I guess I'm glad that you see it as sweet, but in reality, it's actually a more insidious form of homophobia. You and your partner live in a town where you can't go about your daily life without straight people feeling entitled enough to let you know that they approve that your relationship exists. Like as though anyone and asked, Martha. When people are truly comfortable with something, it usually doesn't have to be brought up for no reason. Like if you're actually comfortable with me and my same sex presenting partner coming into your little gift shop, then I should be able to buy my Himalayan salt lamp without you validating the morality of my love life. Straight people ugh, need to get it together. You don't see queers getting all caught up and curious about the way you have sex because we're smart enough to know not to think about things that we find gross. Oh, you're a man and a woman together. You have a baby. So you, sir, came in her You came her pussy. And then some of the cells danced around in the vagina until an alien fetus dropped out. Oh. Like, that's not something people want to talk about while they're waiting for their latte. Gay people know that enough. I hate that queer people, and this is a great example of it, I hate that queer people don't have truly the freedom to live anywhere they want in the country. Meaning that they would be free from microaggressions or subtle discrimination or overt discrimination in many states or just this type of social ostracization. And it makes me sad to see that, you know, Shane and Ryland didn't even realize or didn't consider that they would be moving back to a more conservative area where there might be challenges for a same sex couple that they have to face that they didn't when they lived in LA. But I mean, there's there's also a lot of value in queer people moving out to those 
areas that aren't coastal cities. You know, this is our country too. This is our world. People need to get used to LGBTQIA plus identifying people no matter where they live. Unfortunately, that's not the America we have for queer people right now or people of color. And please, we need to protect trans women of color who are at the most risk. This, see how this series is already depressing? Do you think we're gonna live here forever? Um, I don't know. So this episode called The Haunting of Shane Dawson is about five minutes from being over. But so far it seems like the only person who's feeling haunted is Rylan by the commitment to a 30 year mortgage back in his hometown. They always make leaving the big city seem like a great idea at the end of Hallmark Christmas movies. And my first thought is, oh, it must be so nice for hetero straight Jessica and Johnny to be able to live anywhere on earth without having hate crime graffitied onto their garage door. That's basically the episode because now we just go to a coming up next on this stupid series where we actually hear some info on what I guess the meat of this is supposed to be. Oh my god. I just feel like a negative demon is attached to that. But it's not the camera because it's not in all of them. I don't know what, it sounds like you all need a part-time job or something if I'm being really honest, just to make sure your, your old egg stays hard boiled if you know what I mean. The house tour's not over. Shane wants to show us his backyard. I agree this house could make a cool location for a horror film. I hope to see it used in such a way. I love being by water, being out by this lake. Why is the water turning brown? Was it not brown before? No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know how to take care of a lake? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the first step is being able to distinguish between a lake and a pond. I would be kind of embarrassed to keep telling people that I owned a lake. And then when they show up to see it, it's a brown puddle with dead koi fish floating in it like chicken noodle soup. Anyway, to take care of your pond, which is usually defined by it being shallow enough that sun can penetrate to the bottom. You can add some pond clear to kill that algae overgrowth, or you could use a biofilter for a natural option, or you could just put on your snorkel and goggles and get in there yourself to see if you can physically remove the rotting body of whatever moose waited in there when it realized it was too old to go on. In case it wasn't clear, Jane had no plan for this video. I really don't know what this video is. <laughs> call this video. You're going to call it the first part of a three part series when what it actually is, is 40 minutes of you deciding what your series will be about, which to me is a preposterous and lazy idea that will still somehow result and you getting the maximum millions of required views that will pay the mortgage on your country restaurant ranch house and backyard cesspool. Must be nice. I've only had two videos surpass a million views and I actually care about my work. And ironically, guess who those two videos were about? Wait, sometimes I can't tell the difference between irony and just a sad fact. Which is the one that they put people with polio in back in the 20s? Oh, an iron lung. Yeah, I want one of those to help me recover from watching whatever this is. But I don't mean to sound bitter, I promise you, because no amount of AdSense money or internet fame is worth the fact that I am Noctory Tamino, a grown adult who does not live in the constant fear of an impending demon attack every time the water heater kicks on. And for that reason, I'm proud to be me. Oh, why did I pick up so many clips for this video? I don't care what you say next. Honestly, and I'm not just saying this to like be like funny and like relatable, but like I'll break it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get, like I'm more comfortable with my body, like I'm fine, but like I'll break it. All right, it's official. Shane has really updated his sense of humor. So now his unfunny self-deprecating comments also include an immediate disclaimer that he's actually in a good place and improving his self-image. He's like, it seems like some of you used to really like it when I openly hate myself, but then it seems like some of you don't like it. So I'm just gonna keep doing both until people start buying my merch again. That's the authenticity my audience deserves. <sighs> and that's all she wrote for The Haunting of Shane Dawson, episode one of three. Gotta tell you, I'm glad this one's shorter. We'll see when the next one even comes out. I was not prepared for this. I wanna do real horror movies, so expect some more spooky content coming your way in the form of clip breakdown. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for Nocturito Monning with me today. Don't forget, I have merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.